Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. I know I've been very lazy and I haven't posted my USMLE Step 2 prep for a while and I've been MIA for the last 5-6 months but I was very stressed and I was preparing for my exam so I'll be very consistent from here on, okay? Believe me. Uh, it's a new year, there's a new exam to stress about, I have new hair, new scrubs so let's just get to the video and see how to prepare for USMLE Step 2. Okay, first things, the timeline. If you haven't seen my step one video, I always divide my timeline into dedicated and pre-dedicated. And they're divided like that because what you're supposed to do in those different time timelines are very different. So if you haven't seen my step one video, please go take a look. It will help you even in your step two prep a lot. So the total prep time that I would advise for somebody preparing for step two is total of five months. And I'm going to divide that into pre-dedicated of four months and a dedicated of one month. So as you can see here, the timeline is divided into four months of pre-dedicated and one month of dedicated. What you will be doing in the pre-dedicated is mainly knowledge assimilation, which is basically collecting all the knowledge that you need for your step two exam. And in your dedicated is what you're going to be doing is knowledge memory where you're going to be committing all the things that you've learned into memory so we can call this a memorization and revision phase so in your pre-dedicated you have to do knowledge assimilation and problem solving at the same time unlike step one where there were so many video resources that you had to go through and assimilate all that knowledge step two your knowledge assimilation and step and question solving happens simultaneously, which is through UWord. Uh, you can fast forward to the resources timeline, which I mentioned, if you just want to skip to that, but just listen to me what I have to say. So your UWord is your prime resource for your step two knowledge and question solving, which you have to start at the time of your pre-dedicated. So if you're doing both of them at, in your pre-dedicated, what is left for your dedicated? Well, nobody tells you this, but Step two is very memory heavy. You need to remember a lot of flowcharts, a lot of clinical criteria, and there's a lot of things that you may not have come across unless you've already finished your residency in another country or you have a lot of work experience. So if you're just out of med school and you've only done your internship, it's highly unlikely you'll come across these concepts too often. So I would give the last month as your revision or memorizing month. So all the foundation and knowledge that you've assimilated in your last four months needs to be solidified in that one month because they would fly away. It would fly right out of your head. So you need to spend that one month trying to retain all the things that you have learned. So step two isn't about depth, it's about breadth. You need to know a lot of concepts, but not not too in depth. That's why I felt as though a lot of these YouTube videos, which were rapid review videos, were really useful because they they tell you what you need to know and not everything. Because it's not possible for you to become an obstetrician, a cardiologist, a gastroenterologist. You can't know all of these topics in depth because nobody knows. It's not human to know them. So you need to make peace with the fact that. Okay, I'm not going to know everything, but I need, I'm going to know everything that I need to know. Resources. Well, the most important part of this video. My primary resources were UWorld and the Amboss library. So I don't know, for some reason, the Amboss library is paid right now. But when I was studying, I could just Google something. For example, let's say pulmonary em embolism, Amboss. And it would show me the Amboss article and I could read up everything that I needed to know for step two CK from that Amboss article. So let me tell you how I use these two resources predominantly during my prep. You all, most of it I did in tutor mode and subject wise. Okay, I'll tell you and I'll tell you why that's better. You all is your learning resource. And if you do it subject wise, you will know how to differentiate pathologies with similar presentation. You, 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 if you've reached step two, you are at the stage where you know if this is a respiratory cause or a cardiac cause or a GI cause or a neuro cause. But to differentiate between the minute differences of the di differential diagnosis is what's going to take fine tuning. So I found it more beneficial to do UWorld 
in tutor mode and in subject mode some of the other resources that i used were um i used the amboss q bank in the last 1 to 3 days of my prep only for ethics i felt that the nbme questions were very vague and the ul didn't encompass all that i needed to know for ethics so i did supplement it with amboss and i must tell you it made no difference my exam i had the vaguest most absurd ethic questions and in the end it just went with my gut and felt like i picked whatever i felt like but if you do want to make your prep more comprehensive i would suggest doing those 100 questions of comprising comprising of different ethics questions in amboss the last one week of your prep first aid for step 1 is also a good resource to use if you haven't if you gave step 1 a while ago for me i had forgotten a lot of the concept from step 1 not the main concept but the intricacies of certain drugs and their reactions with each other and if you've taken step 1 more than 6 to 7 months ago i would suggest to you just brush up on first aid as you're doing you were in your subject mode let me tell you how it works so you're doing cardiology just read up the entire cardiology section before you start your cardio questions so you know that everything in first aid you know now you just have to build on that So summarizing the resources I'll divide them into QBank and study material your main QBanks will be UWorld and Amboss uh and Amboss especially towards the end of your prep not throughout your prep that's not what I advise uh study material like you'll see I'm putting UWorld as the first because that is the most important resource that you'll be using along with it use the Amboss library for any difficult topics that you are repeatedly getting wrong question you're repeatedly making mistakes at and also use it as a reference online reference bank then you can use boards and beyonds for step 2 if you have given step 1 a while back this is a very good refresher of your step 1 concepts and additional youtube videos which i'll be explaining later on in this video so how to use you world is going to be huge in your prep you world has come up with these fantastic um modules called notebook and flashcards and please use them don't make notes on your own this is going to save you so much time uh, i'm going to be releasing a video soon on how to use you world efficiently for step 1 and 2 so go please wait for that and check it out so what i would do is you do a question in subject mode and you have notebooks and you have to create subheadings in those notebooks you create as many as you want so under cardiology uh, i'll create a subheading called only pericardial diseases and every time i get some a new information that i didn't know prior i would add that information to my notebook and like that i would fill up my notebook with all the information that i needed to learn which i had forgotten or new information that i didn't know now why do you use flash cards then if you can just use notebooks all the time so you all has this annoying feature i hope they change it you can't add pictures from outside onto your notebook but you can add pictures from outside onto your flash cards sometimes the internet has beautiful flow charts and diagrams and tables that aren't available on you all so if i wanted to save that i couldn't save that on my notebook so i'll just add that to my flash card and that would just as that would comprise of all the information which was not on new world which i liked for example there are some flow charts in ambers like the pneumonia flow chart and the meningitis flow chart that it's golden so i would just save those pictures in my new world flash cards and these two uh, new additions to new world really saves you so much time in step 2 prep okay coming to nbmes <laughs> Uh, a very close friend of mine kept telling me don't look at your score they don't matter just learn the concepts from the nbmes and make sure you know every single concept and go to your test is going to help you of course i didn't listen to her and i kept worrying about my score but she was so correct so your nbmes aren't as predictive as they are for you as they are for step 1 so like it was just a coincidence that my step and my nbme scores kind of matched you can take a look at them right now 
but mostly do your NBMEs in the last three weeks and do revise them in the last one week because I saw so many concepts that were repeated on the test from my NBME and I think I got one of them wrong and I really was kicking myself for it because I knew that that was the same question from the NBME. But mainly learn every single concept that's mentioned in the three NBMEs. I only did 9, 10 and 11 apart from my UW essays, but I felt as though those were more important and a lot more high yield than the UW essays were. Okay, coming to the secret resources that I used. I'm just going to put up a screenshot of all the resources that are golden for step two prep. These aren't very well-known resources. I just find it very hard to learn from text. I'm a very visual learner. And that's why pe many people told me Divine is great. He is really good. And what he's doing is such a great initiative. But it just doesn't work for me because I'm such a visual learner. Uh, the audiobooks do not work for me. They're not well organized for my taste. So I had to find something that was more suited. And I found Dr. High Yield and other resources that I've mentioned in the picture. My God, Dr. High Yield, it's in the name. It's beautiful high yield points that you need to watch in your last one month of prep, which is a dedicated. So every day when you're eating or when you're taking a shower, just put on his videos and keep going on your mind if you know the answer. And then anyway, he's gonna give you the answer. If you watch all of his videos, on 2x at least twice it's going to help you so much because he gives everything subject wise and it's so well structured that you know exactly where you're lacking so i would listen to his videos and I, I didn't know a single answer in the surgery review video and i realized oh surgery is such a weak point for me i need to work on it more so please give a listen dr high yield and there are so other youtube videos that i used so i'm going to create a playlist for you guys and I'm going to add all of these videos in that uh, you can thank me later <laughs> so these are going to be rapid review videos that you're going to be watching in your dedicated time okay let's come to the last week now this is always going to determine how you do in your test. People underestimate, you can prepare really well for the past five months, but if you don't revise the things I'm telling you, you're going to be losing some very easy points on the test. The big things to like mug up in step two is screening and vaccination. Super high yield and there's no point in doing them earlier because you're just going to forget it. So save these concepts for the last week. So screening, I used a deck which is available on Reddit. I will link it below. Do not worry. And it has all the 2022 uh, US preventative screening guidelines, which you need to know by heart. I know it sucks, but please mug it up because it's going to be easy points. And the vaccination schedule, I will link a YouTube video with the BDR Dr. Hip Pneumonic, which you have, if you haven't come across it, just go take a look at that video. It does make things simple. But know this, just because you know the vaccination schedule does not mean you know the answers to the test. They ask some really absurd questions when it comes to vaccinations. So just do your basic cover what you need to know and if they ask you something out of left field just pick something and move on because it's not worth your time to memorize every intricacy of every vaccine it's just it's just not going to be useful for you another thing that you should do in your last week is go through all the u world flow charts so you please save everything in your notebook and then go through all of it again and again and again until it's burned in your memory <laughs> The last week is very important that you do that. My favorite topic, exam anxiety. <laughs> During step one, I struggled with really bad exam anxiety and I had to like take sleeping pills and I didn't sleep the whole night before. It was, it was an ordeal. Step two was much better. So I prophylactically started taking maybe 2.5 mg Zolpidem because I knew it was going to kick in but it kind of was okay. I feel like I think step one is just such a big hurdle and you need to get just, 
you need to initiate this process and it's such it's it's so overwhelming but once you're in it and you know that you've already given an 8 hour exam it's not as daunting so i actually slept quite well before my exam i slept 6 to 7 hours but that doesn't make or break your exam because one day of sleep i know people kind of like you know there are a lot of people on youtube and and reddit telling you you have to sleep you have to sleep no your brain is miraculous it it's going to do fine you sleep for 8 hours you sleep for 2 hours it's fine the adrenaline of being in the examination hall you're going to get through it and you're going to do fine so stop putting pressure on yourself just take it easy it's just an exam and keep remembering that i think it really helped me to realize that it is an exam it is important but your willpower and your mentality will take you so much further than in line life than this score ever will you can get a 220 and you could be the best doctor ever with the best patient satisfaction and you can be a 270 student and also not only really have a successful career because you don't know how to talk to people you don't know how to you don't have your industrious you don't know how to grow your business so there's so many aspects to success This is a gateway and it is important but it doesn't define your future you do. I know it sounds cliche but some things like this I had to internalize and I kind of realized a little later in my life and I hope you guys realize it a little sooner than I did. Test day uh I woke up at 7:30 uh and what did I I want to tell you guys what food to carry just go look at my step one video I carried the exact same thing high protein low glycemic index low sugar so you don't have a sugar like a high and a crash i did carry a can of red bull but i literally took three sips because my adrenaline was already so high i didn't need the caffeine like pack a lot of salads a sandwich maybe nothing too heavy and you should be good but do carry a lot of fluids maybe a fre- lemon juice or something just you know that that sourness just wakes you up a bit even if you're feeling tired and do pack chocolate because sometimes i would just get through the block because i know there's chocolate waiting for me at the end uh there it's 9 hours long so you need something to keep you going uh the test itself the first two blocks oh my god i wanted to cry I didn't know I think 50% of my questions were marked I was so scared I was unsure of everything and it was just hell and then as the third block came on it got a lot it got much better and by block like 5 6 7 and 8 I was just cruising through them I I felt like the test got a lot more simple things were more straightforward so I just guess it was just distributed a little unevenly uh I had three drug ad questions one of them was really hard i think i ran short of time so i couldn't really go through them really well but the others were doable so don't stress about that too much uh like know your basics in biostat there's no point in like doing 200 questions of drug ads it's not going to help you cuz they can change it up however they want to it's just it's basic of logical reasoning so at that at that point in the test take a deep breath It's okay if you don't know it and mark something and move on if you don't know it it's fine. Uh I think I had uh 238 block questions and the rest of them were 40 block questions. I did have some questions which were audio listening but not too many. I think two of them and they were quite simple like very common murmurs that you would come across. It, please carry your plugs because Uh even though I was one of the only people giving the test that day the people who were conducting the test wouldn't just shut up they were kept talking about some TV show and two three times I had to ask them to be like please keep quiet this exam is important for me <laughs> please shut up and uh if things are like that bother you carry your plugs and that's going to help you out what else is there yes score my score so I got a 263 which I am happy with I was a little whiny about it at first because I was aiming for at least a 10 point improvement from my step 1 score. So I was aiming for like a 266. But I'm happy. I think um I think it was fine. For I I thought I was very underprepared for the test because I all these things that I'm telling you, I kind of realized a little late in my prep. It's not like I did all of them from the starting. Uh the memorizing part I kind of did too late. 
I started memorizing everything I learned only in the last maybe 2.5 weeks, which kind of hindered some things. I wasn't as confident in the knowledge that I knew. So given all that, I am pretty happy with 263. And because I want to go into internal medicine, I think it's a pretty competitive score for what I am applying to. And I'm going to learn to be happy with what I'm given. <laughs> I know some people are going to just hate me. Like, oh, God, 263, I'm kind of happy. I'm like, it's just what expectation that you've set for yourself and if you're able to meet them or not. And unfortunately, I have a problem with setting too high expectations and I'm always disappointed. <laughs> but I think it's okay. I'm, I'm learning to give myself a break and appreciate the work that I've done. So this is not an easy process to go through. You need to be a little bit more kinder to yourself and just be like, sometimes it's okay. Well done. This is, this is a marathon. There's step one, there's step two, there's step three, there's clinical experience, there's research experience, there's your personality, your per personal letter. So I know all of this is overwhelming. Break it down into smaller points, like break it down into each step at a time. If you can't do all of them at once, it's okay. People make it seem like it's easy. And I, I find it hard to find some people relatable, especially in the internet. Reddit is a good place if you want to find relatable, but really take it one step at a time. It gets easier as you go through it. I will be making videos on US clinical experience, how to build your CV and a few interviews with some very impressive people who match this year. So that's the end of the video. Like, share and subscribe. You know the drill and hit the bell icon below if you're going to like, if you want to alert uh, for my next videos, I promise I will post them sooner. I do have some more time on my hands right now. And that's it. Take care. Don't lose your mind and keep studying.